Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel. Today we have a great topic for you guys. We'll be talking about uh, meeting rooms too, right? It's a very good problem. So let's see what it's all about, right? So it says given an array of meeting time intervals, right? Where intervals of I equal to start and I, right? Uh, what they're saying, you guys, they're essentially saying a 2D array. And for each array, we have a start and end time, right? You know, the first index represents the start time and the second index, right? The next one represents the end time, right? Of that interval, okay? Of that meeting, okay? Return the minimum uh, number of conference rooms required, okay? A very, very good problem, right? So the problem statement is very concise and very clear, right? So they're saying that a uh, list of meeting rooms, right? Of uh, meetings, right? And uh, we need to return how many conference rooms do we need to accommodate for all those different meetings that are given to us, right? So it's kind of what the ask is, guys, right? So for this one, we were given a intro of two, right? Because uh, zero and 30 would be occupying one room, right? And then uh, since five and 10, five, this meeting occurs while this meeting is happening, right? That means we need another room for this, uh, for this meeting, right? So therefore, we're going to open another room, right? Which is now it's two, right? And then this third meeting, right, uh, can occur after this meeting because it started at a later point than when this ended, right? So it can use the room that's available, right? But 0130 is still hogging the room, right? So it's our return. Uh, since we only need two rooms, uh, right, to accommodate for all those meetings, right? No, we have return two guys, right? In this example, same thing. Uh, we have uh, we, two and four. We use uh, room one, two and four, right? And then when four, when this meeting ends, then uh, we this meeting could also use it, right? Because you know uh, it occurred at a later time than when this ended, right? So it's not a it's not a big deal. We can use one room. We can get away with it, and we're fine. Okay. So now, how do we go ahead and um, solve it, guys? What kind of what kind of algorithm do we need, you know, to go ahead and solve this, guys, right? It's kind of what the ask is, okay? Right, so now, what do we need to do? Okay, so uh, what I'm thinking here, guys, right? Let's go to my drawing board. I think we can kind of, you know, put our thoughts in the board and kind of come up with something, right? Let's see what, what we can come up up, come up with, right? So how do we solve it, right? How do we solve it? How do we solve it? That, that's kind of the important ask, guys, right? So how do we put that into code, right? You know. Uh, code right? kind of uh, algorithm do to come up with okay so i'm thinking uh normally for this kind of problems guys we like to draw them out and put them in chronological order guys right so kind of visually see what's going on right? and then come up with the algorithm that way guys right uh so we need we need we know that we need to sort the input in by start time guys right so we can process the the intervals in chronological order and, and do whatever kind of algorithm that we need to do to uh, solve this, right? So after sorting them in chronological order, right? We need to uh, now uh, make certain decision, guys, right? We need to see, right? For a given meeting, right? Okay. So we need to maybe, I'm um, thinking, we need to kind of introduce some kind of data structure, guys, right? Kind of, kind of help us in uh, simulating uh, the, uh, a particular meeting is being taking place, right? So a data structure keeping track of all the meeting that are happening at any given time, right? So that's why we need a data structure for that, right? So this structure is gonna help us get, have a collection of those meetings, right? And then uh, for each meeting, as we're looking through each meeting, right? We can refer to that data structure, right? Right? And then get, you know, CI out of all those meetings that are currently happening, which one ends the earliest, right? If you could find me a meeting that ends before, uh, I start, then I can use this particular room, right? But if you don't find any, that means that you kind of need to open another room for me, right? And therefore, we would need to add that meeting to uh, the data structure that's that's uh, pretty much uh, representing the ongoing meetings at that particular time, right? So that's kind of what it is, right? So, but which data structure is going to make it easy? So how do we find uh, the meeting that ends the earliest, guys, right? I, is there a way to do that? Do we have to do a O of N search to find that, uh, right? So, no, we don't have to do that, right? The data structure of choice, right? No, we've, we've used a lot of uh, different um, problems where we want to easily find the minimum from a collection of, of elements, right? Or the minimum from a collection 
the maximum and the minimum from a connection biometry. We used the main heat max heat brain. Now we've done a lot of problems on the, those already. So if you guys are not familiar with this type of data structure, right? Refer to those problems that I have. I have a playlist on those, right? So what I'm thinking here, guys, right? We use a main heap, guys, right? Because guys, we want to find, right? So in the collection of elements that we're that we're keeping track of, right? We're keeping track of the end times of the particular meetings, right? You know. Remember, I said that we're going to be sorting the stuff in chronological order, guys, right? So we're going to be sorting them by their start time, right? So, and we're processing them in that order as well, right? So we would process the first meeting, guys, right? The first meeting, we go down to this one, right? And then we add it to our collection, right? We What we're going to be adding, we're going to be adding its end time, right? But this time it's 30, okay? Uh, So now we add that, we go into the next meeting, right? Because that's the next meeting that starts guys right after we do the sorting guys right and after we do sorting now we know that uh we check right this meeting checks all right is there any meeting that ends before i started no because 30 is the only one in there right uh this interval is only in there right so therefore i need to add myself right so i'm going to be adding my end time right like that now uh, we have, uh, we add the, so 10 is at the top, right? Because it's a min heap, right? And then we add um, 30 here, right, guys, right? Okay. And after that, right, we know that uh, we have 10 and 30 now. So now we also will be keeping track of a max, guys, right? The max is going to keep track of the maximum, right? Because the size of the heap, guys, right? is the the minimum amount of rooms that we need to accommodate uh the list of meetings right at any given time right and that's why uh, we're going to capture the size of the heap right every time and get its max right so that you know because that's going to be represented because we're going to need at least uh this size to accommodate for all the different rooms guys right because sometimes we have conflicts and when we're, where we encounter conflicts right we need to open another room guys right and we want to get the maximum a size the maximum size that the heap became right at any given point right so we're going to keep track of right so right now this maximum size is two right and then by the time we go to this meeting right we check uh is there a meeting right give me all so kick out all the meetings that essentially start uh that ends uh before i start right so kick, kick them all out right so we're going to end up kicking the 10 guys right because that's the room that i can potentially use right Okay, so we add that in there. Nope, I meant to do this. So, 15. So, it should be 20 now. 20. And now, points so that's, 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 that's the heap now, guys, right? So, that's kind of the, the algorithm, pretty much, right? We loop, we sort the meetings in a crowd and uh, by the start time to get the stuff in chronological order, right? And then we process the uh, elements. Uh, for each element, right, we check, guys, right, you know, uh, is there any meeting in the mini heap, right, that ends before I start, right? If that's the case, I could use that room. That's a room that I can use, guys, right? And we're going to do this example very quickly, right, since we kind of know the algorithm, right? Everything's sorted by the start time, guys, that we have that. And then we will start off by adding two to the uh, mini heap, right? By adding four, I mean, right? Okay. And the max will be one so far, right? One. Okay. And um, we go on to, to this one, right? We check, is, uh, is there any uh, meeting that ends before I start? Yes, this meeting ends, right? So therefore, I could potentially use that room, right? So I could just, I'm just use this room since you will be done by the time. I start right so that's why we go seven now and then we're good and then we return the maximum one right so let's quickly go to the code i think it'll be you know even simpler uh when you guys see the, the code. so this is the code we're about to write right now so it'll be very simple guys uh let me know if it uh, makes sense the explanation uh so what we're gonna do guys we're gonna do the sorting guys right make sure that you know everything's sorted so we can start our algorithm right so intervals by the start time Okay. 
So now we're going to introduce some sort of uh, priority queue guys, right? To do the uh, to help us in getting the meetings that ends the earliest, right? So that I could use, right? So min heap new priority queue. Okay. All right. So after we do that, guys, we're going to do and end up looping through. The list of intervals, guys, right? Okay, we're looping through each interval. Sorry. Um, so we're going to do a check, guys, right? So we're going to kick out all the meetings that essentially do not. That ends before, right? I start, right? So we do that check. Well, it's not empty, right? And we do the main heap. That peak. Okay. Um, if it's less than or equal to the current interval that I'm on, right? And we check, uh, yeah, by zero, right? Because that's the start time, right? So if that's the case, we do main heap that pull. Okay, so after we do that, I think we are in good shape. Uh, we could we kick out all the meetings that needs to be kicked out. And then we add that meeting to the heap, guys, right? And uh, so we're going to be adding its end time, right? Because that's what we really care about, okay? And uh, remember, I told you guys we need to keep track of the size of the heap, the max, its maximum size at any given point, right? It tells us the minimum amount of rooms that we'll need to accommodate for all those different uh, Uh, meetings, right? So max or main heap that size, right? So that's what I'm doing here. All right. And after that, we just return the max and then we're in good shape, guys, right? So yes, press run code to see if we are good. All right. So this is main heap by default. So that's where it's good. No need to run any comparator, right? So let's press submit see if we're good man all right awesome guys we're about to pass all the test cases guys we got if you guys found value you guys enjoy this video let me know in the comment section if you're new here subscribe because we'll be doing a lot of other videos just like this one so just just like this one so i want to thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next